when you're uh, when you're up there and you're seeing something <clears throat> and having that camera at the ready to catch it, like once you get there, how do you how do you compose that shot in your mind's eye? Ah, uh, well, quite often, uh, what happens now and again, probably because it, it's been something I've been doing so long, it's sort of second <clears throat> nature to me. And and again, I often relate how to learn sort of the technical elements of photography. It's like learning a language. <clears throat> And so if you equate that to learning how to read something, um, you know, first thing we do is we learn the letters and then we learn what each letter sounds like. And then we put the letters together and we sound out the word and then we sound out sentences. And so as a young person learning, you're almost more focused on what the words say and what the sounds do rather than what the story is. Mm. And it's sort of the same for photography. And I think starting out, you um you're it's really easy to be preoccupied with those techno technical aspects but as you do it more you get used to it more just like when you read now you're not sounding out each letter of each word you're just reading and you're getting what the story is telling you mm -hmm. and for me photography is like that so to start uh i was completely you know consumed with the technical stuff and the more you did it the more it became sort of second nature and there are times now, and I love when this happens, when I'll be out and something will catch my attention and I'll take a photo. And then I go back after and I, I spend more time with the photo and I see things that, um, you know, that are those great ways of composing something or great ways to light something that wasn't, it was almost uh, unconscious or mm. subconscious. And I just love going back and going, yeah, that's a story. That's not sounding out words. This photograph is the story. And, and that's always a, a, a fun thing for me to have happen. That's a, a really good analogy. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, a, that's really, a usable clip right there. <laughs> well, you know, good. And it, it, like I say, it's one of those things that, you know, even when I was, uh, you know, I graduated from high school and I went to art school and really jumped in with both feet. And it was a very technical four-year program where you learn a lot about gear and lighting and technique. And there were times when uh, you would find your creativity would get overrun by the other side of your brain, which is focused on all the technical side of things. And that's okay. It's okay to do that every once in a while. Even now, I'll give myself you know, these technical exercises or challenges. But it's really important as a photographer to... At some point, let the equipment take second stage. And, and matter of fact, when I was in school, an instructor uh, told me, and this was a quote that I'll, I bring up even with, with my students, and oftentimes, and he said, it's not the six inches in front of your eye that matters. It's the six inches behind your eye that matters. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really applicable even today when we've got so much uh, technology at our fingertips, mm -hmm. whether it's these great... Uh, phone cameras or, you know, high megapixel digital cameras. I mean, there's so much technology out there, but again, they're all just tools. And when you put less attention onto those things and more attention onto what it is you want to say in the photo, I always find the, the photos are stronger. They're more appealing. Uh -huh.